All right, welcome to the local pickup where we talk about guitars and we give a little bit of money to charity. So uh, my name is Jason Broadwater. My name is Chris Jovey. And uh, we're going to talk about today the Rickenbacker. And, and the Rickenbacker. Yes. Notice I said Rickenbacker because I've spent my whole life calling these Rickenbackers. Like a fool. Like a fool. <laughs> and um, as I started learning more about them, because, you know, again, we are guitar enthusiasts who like to learn about guitars. We, we, uh, all we know is we know nothing, but we learn more and more every day. And um, Rick, the company that makes Rickenbackers, says you pronounce it Rickenbacker. And so I'm thinking I should start pronouncing it Rickenbacker. Yeah. I wonder if it's because we're all conditioned by the much more visible company who they make popcorn by Orville Redenbacher. Bacher. Ba Redenbacher. So it's really well, popcorn that's been messing the whole it's thing. It's also because we're Southern because like I've been out to Colorado and Nevada where mm -hmm. I've spoken as a keynote speaker and we, we call them, of course, Colorado and Nevada. We always have. As always, God intended. As God intended. As good countrymen should. And, uh, <laughs> and they are like, that's not how you pronounce our state. Why are you being stubborn? Yeah. And so when I went and spoke in Nevada, smack you. I had to train myself to say Nevada. Because, you know, nobody wants to stand up. That's like somebody coming to South Carolina and be like, South Carolina. And be like, yeah. what are you doing? I'd, get, I'd kick them right out. <laughs> yeah. No I, time for you. Yeah, get out of my face, I'd say. Don't want to push them into the ocean. So, anywho, this is the... Rick and Backer. This is the 330. It's the Fire Glow. That's the color. They have Fire Glow, the Maple Glow. They have these cool names for their colors. Um, but the story of Rick and Backer is actually Rick and Backer is credited with making the first electric guitar. It's called the Frying Pan. It came out in 1931. And again, you know, Les Paul's credited with kind of inventing the electric guitar. Leo Fender with putting out the first kind of mass-produced commercial guitar. But the, as far as the Guitar History Museum and the Hall of Fame and all that, everybody credits uh, Adolf Rickenbacker and George Bouchamp, who filed the patent in 1931 to create the first electric guitar. And it was called the Frying Pan. It was a little circle, um, it like a, looked like a banjo. It was a little circle and a stick. It had the strings and the tuners up here, and it had the electric pickup on that little circle. Well, the funny thing is, man, George Bouchamp what, played Hawaiian music. And this is in the, in the late 20s, uh, and Hawaiian music was huge in the United States, yeah. in the mainland United States. Yeah. And, um, the but birth you, of the tiki bar. Yes, exactly. I'm a fan. And you could, we actually went to that first we tiki did. bar, yes. yeah, um, in Not L.A. Yeah, um, but uh, you couldn't, again, like every story at the beginning of the electric guitar, you couldn't hear the steel electric guitars that were being played like this. The steel guitars, you couldn't hear them in the Hawaiian music when the band would get cranking. So um, George Bouchamp figured out how to amplify. Same thing Les Paul was doing with, with his guitar, just trying to be louder. And so he figured this out, and the frying pan became the standard in Hawaiian music. And you know that that sound of Hawaiian music, that sound, mm -hmm. that lap steel that lap sound? Lap steel, yeah. It's the frying pan. It's the Rick and uh -huh. frying pan. And they invented that sound. And so they, they went on making guitars that um, they were trying to put electronics on some of their acoustics. In the meantime, Leo Fender changes the world with the Telecaster. The Les Paul comes out, and Rickenbacker is just not keeping up with the modern times until Mr. Rickenbacker sells the company to a different owner, different leadership, different management, and they say, you know what, we're going to modernize the Rickenbacker guitar. And they put out in the 60s this shape and design like nobody's ever seen. They didn't copy the Telecaster or the Stratocaster or the Les Paul. They put out something completely unique, and they have never changed it. And that's what makes them, to, in my opinion, one of the greatest companies. Anybody that knows anything about guitars, if you see a Rickenbacker, there's no mistaking what it is. Yeah. There is no if it's if it looks like a Rickenbacker and it's not a Rickenbacker, it is a copy. It's an imitation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and people aren't near. They're near as successful at copying the Ricken. Back like they do strats right, and yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean there is no doubt it is a gorgeous guitar. I mean it's the not easy to replicate. Oh no, and the the workman the workmanship is fantastic. The big R, the um, you got uh, you know you got a three way switch that switches between the um, neck and the bridge pickups. You got these single coil pickups. They're really hot single coil high gain pickups. You got a maple body. It's completely hollow. Now 
uh, semi hollows have a center block running through here, kind of like Les Paul figured out. You got to have you know what they call the log uh, to keep it from feeding back. It has that center block. This is completely hollow. And actually, the most recent song that I recorded, I was standing in front of my monitor speakers, just had my guitar hanging on me, and I was standing in front of the uh, like the Garage Man computer, you know, and I had the monitor speakers on, and it started looping through the guitar. The feedback did, and so I just hit record, and I just performed like a um, what are those things called? A theremin. a theremin, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Silent Micah. Um, like a theremin, I was just holding the guitar and and letting it feed back against the monitor speakers mm -hmm. because of the just incredible nature of the guitar. Uh, but anyway, um, it's got a, a volume and a tone for both these pickups, and then it has this cool thing, this extra knob, and it's basically a a gain or a drive or a gain that you can turn up, and it only affects the neck pickup. So the the difference is when you're down here on the bridge pickup, we're just on the cleanest kind of clean we can be on. But then when you go up to these, it sounds the same. But you turn this up, it doesn't affect this pickup. And now that's a classic but it affects this thing that Rick's always had. It's always had, and it's this like it's called the Rick sound, or Rico sound, or whatever. Yeah. And it drives up this top, um, the, this pickup right here, and it gives it this total. I'm just, you know, the sound of it, man. It, I think it's one of the most beautiful, clean guitars that yeah. you can have. Man. It's generally associated, well, I mean, I feel a lot of people use it for higher gain, kind of this sort of stuff, but it's, it's generally associated with, the uh, the Beatles gave it, the, it's the jangle. Yes, okay, so it has that high end jangle. So, speaking of the Beatles, man, they were playing, so, so the Beatles were playing in Hamburg, Germany, right? Mm -hmm. The Beatles were not like today, you have the kind of one, uh, person that comes from nowhere to like fame, they were putting in their hours, man. And mm -hmm. you know, they're playing every night, sometimes three sets a day, living in a little apartment above a bar in Hamburg, Germany. And um, John Lennon got a hold of a Rickenbacker guitar. These are made in the United States, right? So a Swiss American named Adolf Rickenbacker is making these guitars. And somehow John gets one in Germany and starts playing it. And supposedly he played all the way from Hamburg, Germany to the Shea Stadium performance in 66, I guess it was, 65, whatever. And every album they recorded and every live performance they recorded, he played a Rickenbacker in every one of them. Wow. And he on the Ed Sullivan show, Mm -hmm. He was playing a Rickenbacker, and um, George was playing a, a Gretsch uh, on that, but then George started playing a Rickenbacker later. But when he played, it's funny, when, when, when they came over to the United States and he got on TV and played a Rickenbacker, people in the U.S. were like, what in the world is that guitar? Yeah. Like, what a crazy looking instrument. Yeah. Little did they know it was being made in the U.S., and everybody started buying them. Yeah, I've always, I just yeah. kind of always assumed it was a British guitar. I know it, it kind of fit, and it almost looks Asian. If you want, it almost looks like just the design is so crazy. It's yeah, different from yeah. anything. It's cra it really is, and it's huge. Like the yeah, body is, it is massive. Like you compare this to like the SG, it was really tiny and 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 lightweight. I mean, it's huge. It's as big as like a jumbo acoustic guitar. I think just so the height of it and stuff. Absolutely. And so the clean Beatles and people like that were playing Ricks. And then it goes into the more kind of like epic rock with like Tom Petty yeah. and Mike Campbell adopted it. And, and Invisible David, if you'll switch to a more drive uh, amp, get that kind of American girl. Um. Okay, so like this distortion, um, is that more uh, like Tom Petty? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure he would say it's not exactly right, but right. You know. But the point is, is that it's got that jangly high end. It cuts through the mix. It's a beautiful instrument. Yeah, no, I've, like I said, it's it's generally associated with a more of a clean sound. Yeah. I mean, there's and the they also have like the, the really famous twelve string sound. If you oh play yeah. An electric twelve string. Yeah. Uh, electric twelve string. You're probably playing a Rick and Backer. Um, but I mean, there's definitely, it, it's, it's funny because I always like what punk bands play that guitar. I know against me, uh, Lord Jane Grace always played. Uh, well, you know, my big one is Guy from uh, right, Life yeah. Spring and Fugazi. Right, 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 right. I mean, in Fugazi, he always played a 330 Rickenbacker. And you think about Ian's SG, that deep, uh, yeah, for, for Guy yeah. to like, cut through the mix, he needed that high end Rickenbacker jingle, jangle. Right. Kind. Yeah, it definitely cuts through. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I mean, there's just no guitar that looks like it, sounds like it. You can recognize them. And they, and they define sounds of different bands. Like Tom Petty's sound is defined by the record. Right, right, right. And right. so is um, R.E.M. Yeah, the R.E.M. Yeah, yeah, that whole sound is Rickenbacker, you know? Yeah. It's, and the Beatles, I mean, the Be John Lennon's guitar, like I said, it was always a Rick and back. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. And which the Beatles, it's associated with more playing sort of major, or just sort of not power chords, I guess, yeah. however you want to say it. With R.E.M., I think it's more of that, like, sound of the sort of, like, yeah. just, like, power, I don't know any R.E.M. songs, uh, but just the power chord kind of there, you know, that's why I associate it with R.E.M. But Actually, and you play, a, you play a power chord on, like, a Les Paul, it's going to be, like, Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing on Rickenbacker, it's like the top half of that. Yeah, you know it's like I mean? an accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a totally different sound. So, I'm Jazz. This is a 1991, um, and I'm, I'm stoked to have it around. I hope to keep it. It's made in the, in the U.S. again. Now, they, they make them now out of the country as a lower level. And actually, they're also made, um, this is the most faked guitar right now. Really? Wow. The, in China, they're making them and selling them unabashedly on Alibaba. For like, they're selling them for like four hundred dollars, and like this would, you know, a, a new Rickenbacker would be, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. And they're selling them maybe six hundred, seven hundred dollars, and they look from the pictures, they look just like it. There are differences, of course, but they're just totally ripping it off. It's completely illegal, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so be careful out there. It definitely seems to me, just like design-wise, I mean, it, it just there's so many little like the big R on the tailpiece, and even this giant. Whatever, I guess you covered that, the, the sort of like truss rod cover. Yeah. It's huge, and the logo just keeps going. It's gigantic. And then the, the shape of the headstock. Oh, no one and else look, has a the, headstock like that. There's three, there's four pieces of wood in the headstock. Yeah, it's crazy. Every, yeah. every, no matter where you look on this guitar, it's just an amazing looking bit of design. Oh, and check this out. On the rosewood fretboard, they put a huge amount of lacquer on it. Yeah, it's very shiny. And a, I, I, don't, I don't think it's actually lacquer, I, whatever the whatever it is. But um, but some people just absolutely don't like it because of that. I love really? it, man. I love Ooh, it. Sure I think it crazy. plays so smooth. I know. But people are wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's it's a beautiful design. Beautiful Very design. cool. Well, that's the story of the Rickenbacker. And a set neck. And a set neck. Yes, yeah, not Bolton. Then Michael Bolton Ma didn't Michael touch Bolton. This one. Michael Bolton yeah. get, didn't get his grubby little hands on this <laughs> one. His grubby little free hand when he's not playing the piano solo. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, yeah, there. That's the Rickenbacker. Um, I don't know who else played one. Uh, oh, Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend oh, was Townsend a big yeah. player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to give a little bit of money to a nonprofit organization using an application that we built called Givolio. You can go to givolio.com, use it for yourself. The idea is that you can log into givolio.com and you can search through any nonprofits in the country, any 501c3. You pick whatever you're into, whatever you think you can you know, give to and make a difference. Organize them however you want into different portfolios and you set up giving. Uh, it could be five dollars a month, two dollars a month, ten dollars a month, whatever. And um, you can then, at the end of the year, you can print out a tax report with one click. Makes it easy, manage it from one place, and hopefully it'll help people give more because we think giving makes the world a better place. So today we're going to give ten bucks to some nonprofit that Chris has picked out. So tell us about it, Chris. Um, so this week I picked out um, a nonprofit called Little Kids Rock. You know, and it's like a thing now, like the movie uh, School of Rock, where you're having like uh, young kids learn how to play music and they're motivated by the idea of it's just like, you know, something that they're interested in and they're choosing. Um, uh, Little Kids Rock is a nonprofit that they work through schools actually uh, just providing education and curricula and instruments to uh, kids to, uh, you know, learn how to play. So I think it fits with what we do. Yeah, <laughs> right. I play uh, instruments and be in bands and uh, be musicians and stuff. And, you know, for like underprivileged, underprivileged kids, um, you know, that's a huge opportunity. And it's an awesome thing to like learn to find a place where you can put your creative energy and stuff. Absolutely. That's a great choice. All right. Well, good. Well, um, we'll give a few bucks to them and help support the cause. And um, we'll see you next time on The Local Pickup. <laughs>